Hey, what's up everyone? BNGF Plus here. And in this tips and tricks video, I wanted to talk about how you can use trains in BeamNG Drive. Trains are one of the most popular topics on my YouTube channel. So hopefully if you're a fan of trains, this video will help get you started creating your own train scenes. So the first thing I would recommend is heading over to the BeamNG Mods repository. From here, you can download the WLD FS32 diesel electric locomotive. This mod was created by Beam Drifter and it's one of my favorite train mods created in the game. It's probably the most highly detailed and accurate. Once you've downloaded and installed the mod, you'll want to select a map that supports trains. I've included a list of these maps in the description below. In this case, I'm going to select the Las Colinas de Vapor version 2 map. You might recognize this map from some of my videos. All right, let's now go ahead and spawn in the train. At this point, I'm not concerned with the positioning of the train as I'm going to use the world editor to place the train where I want it. I'd recommend pausing the game before you spawn the train in, that way when the train spawns in, it's not going to move too far from its original spawn point. Some people recommend first placing a vehicle on the train tracks before spawning a train in, but in my case this isn't necessary as we're going to use the world editor anyway to place the train. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press my shift C key to open up the free camera, and I'm going to move my camera to where I want to place the train. I'm then going to press F7, and that's going to drop the train close to where I want it to be. Now obviously it's not in a perfect position, but we're going to fix that using the world editor. To do that, we're going to press the F11 key, and over here on the right hand side you'll see a pane under Scene. You're going to expand Mission Group, scroll all the way to the bottom, expand Spawn Vehicles, and you'll either see a player um, selection or a clone selection. It doesn't matter what it's called, you're just going to click on that and that's going to select the train. Over on the left hand side of the screen, there's a couple of tools that will be useful for placing the train on the tracks. This includes the move tool, which allows us to move the train both horizontally as well as vertically, and the rotate tool, which is useful for lining up the axles to the train tracks. One of the ways we can line up the locomotive with the tracks is to simply eyeball it. We can do this by placing the free camera either in front or behind the train and place it down low so that we can see under the train. And then we can use the move tool to position the train how we see fit. You can then press the J key or the pause key to unpause the game to see if it lands on the tracks. If you're running into issues with aligning the train onto the tracks, you can always reset it by right clicking on the player or clone and selecting reset and pause. That will reset the vehicle and leave it in a pause state so you can try it again. Let's take a second look at this, this time from the front of the locomotive. You might want to try bringing it down so that you can see the alignment of the wheels against the tracks. Once you've aligned things, you can simply pull it up press the J key and see if it drops down on the tracks without issues. This method can be somewhat difficult, especially for dealing with inclines or other things that might obstruct our view. If you're struggling with the rotation of the locomotive, take a look on the right hand side under Transform Rotation, where you can see the X, Y, and Z values. If you feel like you're very close to getting the rotation but just can't quite get it spot on, take a look at these values and a lot of times they'll be very close to being a whole number. For example, on the x-axis, you can see it's 0.12. I'm going to go ahead and change that just to 0. You might even notice the locomotive shift just a little bit. Same thing with the y-axis. I'm going to make that a whole number as well. In this case, the rotation was very close to being 0, but in other cases, it might be close to being another whole number. For example, it might be at 19.1, and you'll be moving it down to 19. These small adjustments to the rotation might just be enough to allow the train to land properly onto the tracks. Essentially, what we're trying to do is match the locomotive's rotational values to the rotation values of the track. We can even check what the track's rotation values are by using the Select tool and clicking on a piece of the track. Once that piece of the track has been selected, again, we can look over here on the rotation and we can see those values. In this case, it's just 1, 0, and 0. We can then apply those values to the train to make sure that they line up. We can use the same method for placing additional locomotives or boxcars on the track as well. Now that we've placed the boxcar, we can exit the world editor, use the L key to attach them, 
and finally drive the train. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions or suggestions for future tips and tricks videos, let me know in the comments below.